Welcome back to Hot Takes, the motorcycle show for busy people who love motorcycles. And today I'm going to talk about hybrid motorcycles in 2024. Stay tuned. In the last month or so, we've seen KTM and BMW announce automatic transmissions for their large adventure bikes. Why would they want to do this? One story that has been going around is that they want to compete with Honda and their DCT and it's doing really well. And that very well might be part of it. However, I think that there might be another reason and that has to do with hybrids. Now, hybrids require an automatic transmission to seamlessly shift power from your electric motor to your gas motor and back again. And they may be developing their automatic transmissions to include hybrids for the future. Let's talk about that. For the part on hybrids and the Kawasaki Ninja 7, you can skip ahead using the chapters or the timestamp on the screen. In the next section, I go into the details and the pros and cons of various types of automatic transmissions. Let's just take a step back and talk about new tech automatic transmissions. Now, that's something that's going to be quite controversial to a lot of the viewers and even to myself. And we've noticed that BMW and KTM have announced automatic transmissions in their bikes in the last couple of months. Honda has had automatic transmission, a DCT, dual clutch transmission for quite some time. And dual clutch transmissions, they work great in cars. You get the smoothness of an automatic coupled with the performance that's unmatched because you have two clutches, you have two input shafts, and when you go from first to second, you just switch the clutches. You engage two gears at one time, first and second, and you just switch the clutches. And that means a more rapid, seamless shift than you're gonna find in any other application. And so in cars, hypercars, performance cars, they only run a manual transmission if they want to because performance is in DCT. However, bikes are different. They are not the same. And one of the things is bikes are constant mesh transmissions. They're already engaged. All the gears are engaged all the time. And so gear changes are very rapid uh, with a manual transmission. You just back it off a little bit and you pop the next gear. And with a quick shifter, then you have up and down shifts that are um, close to seamless. They aren't seamless, but they're close. And only MotoGP bikes go with the extra cost of an actual seamless transmission where they need those little tents that they're making up, you know, coming out of turns uh, and acceleration. So in motorcycles, we've still stuck with manuals because with quick shifters, uh, it's almost like having an automatic, right? But obviously it isn't automatic. It doesn't shift for it, you. And so only Honda has taken the leap and put those in. Well, we've seen uh, BMW and KTM announced semi-automatic transmissions that have actuators that do the shifting and clutches that are, that are controlled by the computer. And KTM has a centrifugal clutch, uh, which is more like a scooter clutch. Now, I am not against automatic transmissions at all. Um, I ride a scooter daily to work uh, in East Asian city traffic, and there is nothing quicker through traffic than a scooter. Um, twist and go, it is the way to go. I also ride off-road, and for off-road riding, I do not agree with having an automatic clutch. And that is because when you're riding off-road, you have your throttle hand and you have your clutch, and you control the power delivery with both of those things together. And sometimes you're on a steep hill. Basically every time I ride, I end up on a steep hill with not enough traction. And if I need to get going, I can just ease in the throttle and then ease in the clutch. And that's gonna be much smoother than having an auto clutch and twisting the throttle only because you're using two control points versus one. And so for off-road riding, I believe that using a clutch is the way to go. For cruising on the highway, um, I don't see any reason to go with an automatic transmission because you throw it in high gear and you just go. It doesn't cause you any extra mental or physical work to use a manual transmission. And then in the twisties, I believe that with a quick shifter, a quick up and down shifter, I'd rather be able to control it. I'd rather be able to hold a gear. And so I don't see a big gain there either. 
Um, so the only area that I see is, as I mentioned, commuting. I think automatic transmissions are very nice for commuting and commuters. So why are these companies putting money into automatic transmissions? Hybrid technology um, is in its infancy in motorcycles. So it, way back in 1997, it came to cars and it has developed and hybrids in cars are very, very good. You can have performance applications where you have hyper cars that have an extra 200 horsepower that comes from the electric motor. It fills in those gaps when you're engine is out of its power band, you can give that power and it smooths it out and gives you better acceleration and better performance out of corners and, and off the line. And it's fantastic, right? And then it saves fuel and it's great. So do those, those uh, advantages that we find in cars, do they transfer to motorcycles? Well, not yet. So Kawasaki took the leap and they made a hybrid motorcycle. Two of them, uh, which are based on the same platform. You have the Z7 hybrid and you have the Ninja 7. And they have their whole Z line, which is their naked line and their Ninja line, which has the fairings. Uh, if you compare it to the rest of the line, uh, you have to ask who is this motorcycle for? If you look at the specs, a Kawasaki Z7 hybrid makes 68 horsepower. Um, nine horsepower comes from the electric motor. It costs $12,500 in the US and it weighs 225 kilograms or 496 pounds. Now, how does that compare with the rest of the lineup? Well, if you, the closest competitor in price and size seems to be the Kawasaki Z650, parallel twin, uh, 650 cc uh, engine rather than the 451 cc parallel twin that's in the hybrid. So the weight on that is 193 kilograms or 426 pounds. It is 67 horsepower and that is uh, 32 kilograms or 70 pounds lighter than the hybrid. Okay. That's a lot. That's a big difference. Okay. So that's the difference between a midsize bike like a 650 and a big bike like a 1200. So the hybrid basically weighs what a 1200 would weigh and costs what a much bigger, like a 900 CC bike would cost with the performance, with the power of a 650. The 650 is $8,100 up to $8,600, okay? So we're talking about $4,000 more for the hybrid. Are you serious right now, bro? The 650 gets 52 miles per gallon. Um, if you want to get better fuel mileage, you can get the Z500, uh, which gets uh, over 60 miles per gallon. But the hybrid does excel in this and it gets 80 miles per gallon. Okay, so the main reason to buy this is increased fuel economy. And that's the only metric that it wins on. So I have to ask the question, who is this bike for? Who would buy this bike? I'll buy that for a dollar. I don't know. Okay, I don't think it's going to sell very well. Now, remember that in car terms, this is like the first generation Prius. Hybrids, this is the worst iteration of hybrid that you will see, and it will only get better. Now, why should we care? Why should they build hybrids? Why would BMW and KTM be interested in this market? Well, the reality is that many countries have declared that by 2035, that they will not be producing internal combustion engines. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. Now, that seems like they may have been a little bit ambitious with this declaration because what we're finding is that electric cars uh, in many applications just aren't there. Now, they work fine for day-to-day -day city driving. However, if you load them up, if you try and tow a trailer, if you try and move heavy loads and go long distances, at this moment in 2024, they are not there. Without a huge jump in technology, they will not be there. And motorcycles 
suffer from the weight. So a car, you load it up with an extra 500 kilograms of batteries and it still works. It still functions quite well. However, a motorcycle, you put an extra 200 kilograms or 100 kilograms on that motorcycle and it's not going to handle well. It's not going to be a motorcycle that people want to use. Um, the Stark Varg is an amazing motorcycle. It's incredibly fast. It works very well for a racetrack. Now people are getting different mileage out of it for when they ride it on the trails. Uh, however, it's not a trail bike and it's on the upper limit of what dirt bikes weigh. And so if you need the range, if you want to be able to go farther, then you're gonna find that it's gonna have to get heavier. So the technology at this point, unless we have a big jump, is a little bit problematic. However, if we look at cars, so let's go back to, to this declaration that they will not be making internal combustion engines for the road in 2035, even though it seems ambitious, what if they do it? What if they're able to outlaw cars that are internal combustion engine? What about motorcycles? Well, if we look at the regulations, motorcycles are like five years or so behind cars. And in, at that point, we're gonna have a lot of pressure on motorcycles. And so you may come to a point where a strictly internal combustion engine will be difficult or impossible to sell as new off the showroom floor. They're making it harder and harder to make good internal combustion engines that are powerful because of all the restrictions. So what these companies are looking at is, could we solve our problem and continue to sell motorcycles with a hybrid technology? If you combined a smaller internal combustion engine with a electric motor and you put those two together, are we going to get more life out of our motorcycles and continue to ride them, even though we're gonna see hits in performance likely? What do you think about it? Is the future hybrid technology, is this what we're going to see? Or is it just gonna die out because nobody wants to pay for the cost and complexity and the performance loss is too great? Let us know in the comments, like and subscribe, and join us again next time on Hot Takes, the motorcycle show for busy people who love motorcycles.